Okay, today we did a couple of example problems of applying the conservation of momentum equation. Um, but more importantly, we started down the derivation of uh, energy conservation. Energy for our purposes can be thought of as uh, several components. This is for a particular volume of fluid. We have the kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, plus the potential energy, mgz, uh, plus the internal energies, which I'll just denote as e sub int. Uh, you can think of those as, as temperatures um, or enthalpy. Um, the energy per mass, little e, per fluid mass, then, would just be one-half v squared plus gz plus the internal energy uh, measured locally. Okay, so uh, with these definitions, we can think about what our what classical mechanics or classical thermodynamics, I guess, would tell us about the change in energy e. And the expression that we will work with is that the time rate of change of the energy for a system that we're following, that system there, is equal to um, the rate of heating minus the rate at which work is done by the system. So W dot equals work done by the system. Penmanship is suffering today. Sorry about that. That conservation law then becomes the left-hand side of our Reynolds transport theorem. And we can then write down our Reynolds transport theorem uh, just simply to say that the left-hand side is QH, so the rate at which heat is added to our fluid, minus work done by the fluid, is equal to, now we have the time rate of change of the energy of our um, control volume, which I'm going to write in the form of a triple integral of rho times little e dv, where little e is the e given in the upper right here and consists of these three uh, separate terms. Then we have our flux terms, which again is going to involve little e. So we add up over all the faces of our control volume rho little e vi dot ai. So here again we have the, uh, the volume flux of uh, fluid crossing our control surface multiplied by density that becomes mass, so it becomes a mass flux and then because E is the energy per mass what we're looking at here is the energy crossing the control surfaces per time. Um, and again E here, just note in red is the same E as, as given by these three terms. So just rewriting this with, um, I guess I'll rewrite the uh, the flux term. This is really the, the, as, as far as we got on, on Friday. Um, just write this as d by dt of the energy of the control volume as a shorthand, plus the sum over the faces of rho, and I'll write vi dot ai first, times the sum of these three terms, one-half v squared plus gz plus e internal, evaluated at each face i. So what we're talking about here then is the fluxes of kinetic energy, potential energy, and internal energy. Now what we're going to do next week is we're going to explore how this work term can be split out, and what we're going to end up with here are pressure forces. And those pressure forces uh, will enter through the work term, but will have the same mathematical form as the flux terms over here. And have a rho v dot a component to them. And so we're going to be able to merge that there. And I guess what I want to just point out to, and as a final uh, comment today is that the um, formation, the basis of the Bernoulli group is starting to appear here. Um, if we divide by gravity, we get v squared over 2g plus z. Once we bring this pressure term over, Bernoulli will reappear. But now, some other terms um, also arrive, whether it's work done externally, changes in temperature or heating, um, and that's what we're going to talk about on Monday.